to you're trying to kind of elevate your everyday experience into something that you have seen as a significant kind of uh, achievement in in the formal aspects of art. <laughs> I'm going to pour myself a little water. <laughs> There's one person standing there. Me too. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you. It's me too, I think. <laughs> okay, now we, I said about how the structure of ledger's work kind of informed, informed the train painting and other paintings. Sometimes it's not that you start with everyday experience. Sometimes it's not as if you start with the scene, but you start with that something, that some sense of this is the structure that I want. This is the way in which my painting has to be built, whatever it is about. It's not that I want to paint this or that or that this particular area or this particular subject. It is that this is what I want to paint. And these are examples of how that kind of work may proceed. On your right on top is the first idea of this is the kind of intermeshed structure, which is like a layering of, say, accordion structures, you know? So this is the kind of structure that I want. This is the kind of formal feel that I want to give my work. From there, one tries to bring in elements from one's own seen world, what one, has see, one, what one sees around one. Then, in my process of work, I've always taken a lot of photographs. So what you see there is actually a photo collage in Photoshop. So one brings in, OK, one wants a building, that shaped building. One wants something that is receding in that way. One, one goes around in Photoshop and actually twists and distorts them to make that structure come alive. So one is building a structure out of blocks of reality. And then make a sketch from that and then make the painting, which is a diptych. So painting like this has not started really with everyday experience, but the everyday experience has been there all the way as a background all the time. So it is, as I said, the kind of noise or the kind of atmosphere in your head. And you're drawn to structure it in a certain way. And that structure comes from inside you. This is the way in which you want to restructure reality. And you go around twisting and turning and whatever, those buildings and those flyovers into this. What it achieves, I don't know. I mean, it's. It's why you are doing this is there are two questions here. One question which recently a, a student asked me that if you can do it in the photograph, then why do it in the painting at all? Right? Once you've done it in the photograph, why go and paint it? Well, it, you can't really do everything in the photograph. That's not what you can get. So there are lots of things that you can't do in the photograph, no matter how. And there are lots of things you change. And mainly, it is the people that you can't get the way in which you want them in the photograph. So it is the people that you animate that whole scene with comes from your own
the realism of these works, till the works that I've shown you till now, is in a sense a project. It is a project to represent the seen world. Yeah? Even in this last work where I said that it starts with the structure, but ultimately the project is to construct and to present, represent the seen world. So it is a certain kind of realism, which is in fact a project. We'll speak of another kind of realism a little later. The second source, as I said, after everyday experience, is memory, nostalgia, living with your past, the way in which you continuously are bringing up the past and your memories and reassessing them. This is a painting called Father's Story. Why you return to those memories? You, you do them even before you start painting them. They are memories that keep recurring and you re return to them. At some point, you feel that making a painting out of it would help to settle it in some way. It's not that it, it's not that it is resolved. If, I mean, it can be an unpleasant memory. It can be a pleasant memory. But you reinterpret it, and you give it a longer life. You give it a life outside yourself. So this is father's story, actual memory of me sitting at Sangli station with my father. He's saying things that he felt he, had, he should have said long back, but he, he wasn't able to, things like that. And then the space behind. In trying to transfer, in trying, trying to construct a painting like this, you draw on many other things too. And you draw, in this case, for example, I would cite, I would draw on Bupen's work and the large ex expanses of land that you would paint and the figures at the bottom and the small houses all around at the margin of the space. So things like that one draws on and one also draws on the experience of the space itself. Another work called Town from 84. This is not actually a work in itself that is to do anything with memory. It is very much a work which would fall under everyday experience. It is a space we, we moved to Thane and this was the environment around us. I show it specifically because there were certain areas in Thana that reminded me of a place that I had lived in as a boy, and that was near Pune, Khadki. So certain areas in Thana would strongly remind me, especially the kind of flat, dry grounds, uh, the kind of yellow, uh, burning kind of land. So, and that memory would add an element of, I would say, goodness to the work. It was a good memory, it was a happy memory, and it would add that element to this work, to, to my perception of reality as it was then, to, to the present. When one has one, when one has that kind of a feeling of goodness about something, I feel that one can, in fact, try and understand perception about that, perception about a place. I mean, when one has a sense of goodness about a place, then one investigates one's perception about space. And these works 
of Thana, but works that are investigating the relationship between figure and ground, between receding ground and figure in front. So this was a period in which I could actually, and this went back to the childhood memories of how I had seen flats, slowly undulating, slightly rocky, this kind of land around Pune, how I had seen that and how I had experienced that. It was a way of trying to reinterpret or to understand what happens in painting this kind of a space, what happens in transferring to two dimensions this sense of space. Now this is called memory double page and is very much in, uh, very much inspired by the memory of that place in Pune, near Pune, Khadki, where I spent many years of my childhood. And various elements of, one is of course the evocation of the land itself, the evocation of cycling around those roads, the evocation of the playground, the evocation of warm summer afternoons, all that, but also the way in which it is structured. The mapping, the mapping of that space that takes place in memory, one realized that in my mind, the place had become mapped, like I knew exactly that the place where the house that we stayed in would have been right lower corner and the playground was left upper corner and my friend's house was somewhere. So it, this mapping had happened in my, and I think it happens with all of us, that when you think of places where one has stayed, there is a kind of map in your mind about, you know, you can actually take your finger around. It's there, it's there, it's there, which doesn't correspond with exactly how it may be, but it does correspond in some senses. So this mapping, this structuring which comes from the earlier two paintings, and also as we saw from the miniatures, from various sources. So one is able to bring all this together to construct an image of map, an image which recalls a certain space and which celebrates, in a sense, the memory of a certain place. An old photograph. Shanta, my wife and my mother, clicked sometime at home. And when I kept it, one looks at it occasionally, one knows there's something in it that one is drawn to, more than so many other photographs that are there in the album. But this is one that one keeps re returning to. And then at some point, one decides that one should do a painting of this, make a painting of this. What you're seeing is a detail. So it's more or less the way in which it was, the photograph itself. And then you see the, on the right, in the right half of the painting, is a reconstruction of home, of rooms within home, of myself. In fact, painting the painting town, which we saw earlier, which I said had given me a good feeling. So me painting that uh, painting there, my father sleeping just inside the window. So this is home on one side, and this is outside. So, and the outside is a combination of Thana, of Bombay to some extent, and of areas where we had lived as a family earlier near Nagpur, in Sangli, so various places. So the outside is all that. So it's like constructing a whole world inside and outside. And 
in a sense, bringing kind of harmony, like bringing this inside and outside into in harmony. So it, it is nostalgia. It is nostalgia for a certain past, but it is also an imagined harmony. So I would say that it's important to realize that you, const you create out of that photograph, you create an image of imagined harmony. This is how you would have liked it to be. So that is the kind of thing that memory 